we'll have to make do with what we have. All right. So, are we more behind than the other class? We could be, but we'll try to catch up today. <laughs> I don't know why that's a cool thing. All right. Um, first thing is to kind of recap what we went over. Marker. Um, so we talked a lot about belief systems, right? And what was an example of a belief system? Does anybody remember? So long ago, Christianity. Christianity would be one. Okay. Do you mind, and Grace, you guys mind just moving in a little bit? So it's, sorry, I know it's kind of weird, but it makes a better sense if we're all kind of. Asher's all alone, all of his, mm -hmm. all by I'm myself. Alone. Alone. They've all abandoned you. Yeah, I know. No. Okay, now we're like one big happy family. Okay, so. Um, the belief system is something like Christianity, and another thing to say, so it's like a, it's a set of ideas that build off each other, right? So when we're thinking about something like Christianity, we talked about there are basic beliefs, basic ideas, and you have secondary and then third level ideas. So it's very much like any kind of system or structure where you have a foundation, a first floor, a second floor, etc. Okay, and I think one of the examples that we used was like, you know, God exists, right? Yeah. As a foundational idea, and then you kind of go from there, etc. Okay. Now, um, shoot, now I'm going to have to. Colton, could you move the Jenga tower where? here? Yes, would that be visible? No, I can. Move, I'll move this back. Well, how can? Then you can see the Jenga tower. Okay. Oh, that one. It's okay. We'll see. Wow. I know. That. That was impressive, sir. Well done. Got it. Okay, you you also garnered extra credit today. Yeah, let's go. Cool. <laughs> should I go to class? Yeah, yeah. He's not here, but I'll go. <laughs> Okay, so a couple of things to note over a um, over a belief over this what we're talking about with the belief system. All right, first of all, the belief system, the um, foundational idea, must be strong or solid. Foundational idea must be strong or solid. Why? Because, Colton, what would happen if I started removing a bunch of pieces at the bottom of this? Probably tip over. Yeah. And then it gets weaker. How many do you think I could do before it would start tipping over? Two. At the bottom? At the very bottom? At the very bottom, yeah. No. Two. Good. Two side pieces. Oh. Oh, shoot. I, I don't know. I, I packed well, them in there, dude. You did? All right. Well, why don't you do it then? You just gotta. Okay, well, that's fine, we'll go on. Okay, one. let's stop with one. Okay. okay, so the whole point of this, Jenga Tower, is to demonstrate the fact that if you have a system or any kind of tower and you take out the bottom, the whole thing is gonna get weak. If you have a belief system and the foundational ideas, the basic ideas, like this one, are weak, aren't strong, you can doubt them, the whole thing is gonna fall over. All right, so if you remove this or it starts to get Weak, the whole thing is going to start to tumble. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, um, we can say a good belief system is like a well constructed. Tower. That seems like, that seems apt, okay? Because we have the Jenga tower. And that would mean that the foundations are really strong 
it's tightly compact, it's put together, it's gonna last, etc. All right. Um, and yes, okay, I think that was about it on the issue of a belief system. And we wanted to make sure that was super clear. Okay, the next thing to talk about, so point one for today, this is just the recap and kind of giving a sense of the belief system, is we're gonna look at this term from Descartes which says clearly and distinctly. Now, clearly and distinctly means certain. Can't be doubted. Another way to say it is 100% or absolute. All right. How does this connect to what we studied with math and logic? We both 100% right all the time. Okay, well, like, give an example of that. Like two plus two equals four. Okay. Or the triangle thing. If one side's three, one side's four, then the other side has to be flat. Good. Uh, what about with logic? What if I give like a valid deductive argument? So if I say... Then it has to be... Then the premises have to be true. If the premises are true, then what happens? the conclusion true. Right. So if I say all men are mortal, Colton is a man, I'll add, therefore, what's the conclusion? I'm mortal. Okay. Or, yeah. All right. All men are mortal. First premise. Is that true? Yes. Colton is a man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conclusion necessarily is true. Okay. So like, we could also say valid deductive argument. Okay, so that's, that's just a sense of a belief system, clearly and distinctly. <coughs> Another thing to say here is, uh, point two, is this notion of true and useful. Okay, did we talk about this the other day at all? The what? So, yeah, what true and useful. Yeah, hold on. Sorry. Uh, I just got, um, I think one of the points is to reflect at each step. Uh, that you're doing, you'll get a true and useful belief system. Right, okay, um, good. So, uh, but let, let's, yeah, very good. Let's just analyze this for a second. So, on Monday, what were some of the beliefs that were held in the con historical context of Descartes that we talked about? Like Protestant, Catholic, and then uh, geocentrism. Right, yeah, so geocentrism, what's that idea? Earth, Earth, Earth is, is the center. center. Earth is the center, okay. That had been held for thousands of years, is it true? No. No, okay. What was the medical example I used? Bloodletting. Blood 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 okay, is that a useful belief? Mm -hmm. Evan, why not? Because uh, when you're sick, you need the blood to help you get better. Yeah, you absolutely do, okay. So Descartes looks around at the world that he's in and he says, there's a lot of belief and a lot of belief systems, but it's very hard to say that they're all true and useful. And he says, if I'm gonna build my own belief system, what I want to do is ensure that it's true and useful, okay? So you want to make sure that it's correct, okay? And like Ty said, you want to make sure it's correct at every step, right? You want to make sure this is correct, this is correct, this is correct. Okay, so you want to make sure it's true at every step, okay? And you want to make sure it's useful. You can put it, put into practice, and it's beneficial. So it's unlike the example of the bloodletting. It's the sort of belief that if you put it into practice, it's gonna help you and others in the long run, okay? So like your parents always say, eat your vegetables. It's a good idea. If you do that, you'll probably be healthier. If you just end up eating like french fries all the time, it's probably not a good idea. Okay, that, anyway, the point being to all of this is that the um, belief system is gonna be Clearly and distinctly, or one final point to this, okay. Um, there's gonna be absolute certainty 
at the base of the system, okay? Analogous to you want the foundation of your Jenga tower to be really strong, you want absolute certainty, especially at the base of it. Because the whole system of Christianity crumbles if you're like calling this into question. I'll just give an example of this. I was talking on Tuesday with a very good friend who's a priest in Rhode Island who was ordained 10 years ago, and the other priest that he was ordained with was kind of this rising star. People were putting him and promoting him and all this other stuff. And then he had this huge crisis of faith, and he said, I don't believe that God exists anymore. So he stopped being a Catholic, he stopped being a priest, the whole thing crumbled. I'm actually not sure what he's doing now, but, but it, it's, I'm just using it, it's a sad story in one sense, but I'm using it to show like once the foundational idea goes, the whole thing falls apart. <coughs> Make sense? Okay, now, um, third thing to say, okay, is that, um, this is gonna be a little weird, but I'll explain it. One man wrecking crew, what do I mean by that? I mean by that, the idea that Descartes is saying that a belief system is, is like a, a, a tower or a house or something, some sort of construction. And I think I used the example the other day that like I wanted to be the only one who designed my own house and the conversation kind of veered off. I, I wasn't super clear on what I meant by that. What I meant is, let me be more specific. If I'm wanting to find a place to live, a dwelling, a habit, right? A house, which is analogous to a belief system. And I come to a house that a bunch of people have designed over the years. They've made additions here. They've made re, they've redone this. Uh, some people have tried to work on the basement, but not super well. And the house is kind of falling apart. It's ugly, it's disorganized, it's not in good shape, okay? Which is like a belief system that has too many influences, too many people working on it. It comes from too many different sources. Descartes says, in the house example, he would say, you would just take like a bull, you didn't have bulldozers back then, but the example holds. Now you take a bulldozer and you wreck it, right? You just completely destroy it, flip, get the foundations out, and then you would rebuild from the ground up, all right? So that, that was the point I was just trying to make with that example on Wednesday, all right? So you're a one-man wrecking crew, which means you think, down existing belief systems and rebuild from the foundation upward. All right? So for example, with the belief system, when we're thinking about Christianity and so somebody's like, oh, do I really believe it? Okay. St. Dee is like uh, a belief about going to church, all right? If somebody really wants to know if they believe this and to see if it's true and useful and to have absolute certainty on it, to know it as clearly and distinctly as being true, the person isn't going to just analyze this, right? That'd be like me going into that house and just say, well, I'll redo the bathroom. It's like, no, if I moved into that house and it's falling down, I'm not sure how stable it is, I'm not sure how strong it is, it's disorganized, it's dilapidated, I'm gonna go right to the bottom. I'm gonna go right to the foundation and rebuild from there. And Descartes is saying, with the beliefs that he has received over the years, that's like that house, okay? Too many people have designed it, too many people have worked on it. So what do you do? You start from the foundation, you rebuild from the bottom up. You don't leave any brick left standing, and then you just take it up and you rebuild it. All right? It's an extreme kind of radical idea, but Descartes says, look, in the historical context that we're in, there are all sorts of beliefs that we talked about that may not be true and may not be useful. All right? They seem problematic. People are fighting over them. So what's the best thing we can do? We get to certainty. Well, how do I get to certainty? I got to know that the foundational belief is certain. Well, how do I do that? I have to follow it at every step and check along the way, just like Ty, like you said, you have to check each step at a time, okay? So, the final thing, to, the, another thing to say is those four rules 
to guide <coughs> this process. All right, now does anybody remember what those four rules were? Ideas that you know clearly and distinctly or distinctly true. Break down, uh, break ideas into smaller parts. Follow step by step process. Reflect at each step. All right, so the point being, C and D ideas, clearly and distinctly known, right? Which means you have certainty on them and they can't be doubted. C and D, clearly and distinctly. Analyze. You break down this, the, the, the idea into its um, component parts. So like this one, you say, well, what is God? What does that term mean? What does it mean for God to exist? So you break it down, okay? Third one, <coughs> step by step. If you're gonna go with this idea, you'd start at this, and then you wouldn't just jump to going to church. Then you'd be like, well, did God establish a religion? Did God said speak a word? Did God reveal himself in the Bible? You would get to other steps before jumping to this one. Just like you build a house step by step. Just like Colton put this together step by step, okay? I know it's repetitive, but it needs to be super clear. Final thing is you just reflect at each step, right? So if you're like, I'm pretty certain about this one, but the idea of God revealing himself, I'm not so certain about. You have to sit with that to make sure that you do come to certainty. All right, I'm throwing a lot out, I realize. But are there any questions on this so far? It's all pretty clear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can erase this. Yeah. Okay. Let's start getting into this a little bit more. Okay, so the next thing to say, point five, I guess it is, is um, we need to talk about basic beliefs. Okay? And I use the term basic referring to those ideas that are at the bottom, the foundation of a belief system, right? The, the ones that are, we just assume to be true and things build off of them like the foundation or the basement of a house, okay? So what's a very basic idea that we all tend to hold to, we don't really question, we assume to be true, we operate with in an everyday way? We're all breathing. Okay. So A, we're all alive. Okay, good. That seems pretty apt, okay. I'll give you an example. Don't break the law. Pardon me? Don't break the law. Well, that, that's, that's assuming this already. Okay. Right? If you don't exist, then there's no reason yeah, for you to break the law or not break the law. It's irrelevant. So I feel like you had one. Oh, I was going to say murder is wrong, but that doesn't work. Right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a basic one, yeah. but it's not quite as basic. Yeah, but that's good, yeah. Would it be that God made us? Uh, or, well, God exists seems to be one, right? Okay. okay. Let me give you an example of this. Um, when you guys walked in here today, did you think you were walking into a dream? No. no. Why not? Because we woke up this morning. Okay. So you're. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> we could be in a dream right now. Well, that's I'm a weird that, dream. That thought. Why are you Let's dreaming about Pietro Poli? What was that? I said, why are you dreaming about Pietro Poli? <laughs> Wow. Well, this, this would be a weird that's, dream. That's a weird <laughs> dream. You're dreaming Why about would this a, be a weird dream? Well, you're dreaming because about you a dream. Because you just sat with dreaming, and then I notice I'm dreaming, and then I wake up, and I'm like in World War II or something. Yeah, but Evan was saying that <laughs> dreaming of me would be weird. I'm like, yeah. why? What's so wrong oh, with no, dreaming you're not weird. weird. You're a cool guy. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> dreaming about your teacher isn't weird? You see me like almost every day. It's like, there was this one that bad teacher in high school. Go to, go to class. When, I mean, I used to have dream. Have you ever had nightmares about uh, finals? No. Like when, um, like when you after you've taken the final and you wake up and you you're, I like, like risky business. 
No. No. Yeah, Tom Cruise woke up <laughs> from a dream, uh -huh. and he had four minutes, and he was night. He had a nightmare that he missed his final. Oh yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what happened to you, Jamie? Where you thought you were? I actually, so I just sleepwalk sometimes. Uh -oh. And apparently, I like. Wow. Yeah. What's dog do? My, <laughs> our current leader out had to open our garage door because we were stuck. Oh, thank and God. And so my mom in the middle of the night comes out and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Wow. <laughs> well, thank God she woke up. No, it was terrifying. You're not yeah. supposed to wake up. But what is she oh. like? It was literally. That's crazy. I had oh. to call the store and she like, I'm not coming to Oh, my God. Day. Oh, that's horrible. Well, I mean, thank God you didn't drive. That's what I mean. <laughs> They're pretty rad though. Imagine getting pulled over. <laughs> no, that would be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> he just, <laughs> he just fake sleeping. Like, actually made it that far because apparently the car was dead too anyway, so it was gonna be a bad day anyway. Oh. Yeah. It was. It was a great day. Oh. That's crazy. Okay, so you're not in a dream. Um, let's go with another basic one. Um, Josiah. What do you have in front of you? A little journal. Okay, what else? Pot. Did you say pot? Pot. 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 <laughs> Soda. I'm like, hey, man, it's <laughs> you do you. <laughs> um, yeah, I forgot I'm not in the East anymore, so you guys call it pop out here. No, it's soda. Dude. No, it's not pop. No, you call it soda. It's I say both. It's yeah, it's yeah me too. I kind of have what what makes a difference on the east they call it soda? All right, Grace, what does he have? What's a soda? What's a soda? Okay, what's a what what's do a I pop, have? Then? I would probably a pop, pop is like pop. like a pop is a sound. It's an onomatopoeia. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it's an onomatopoeia. Like yeah. Not expecting. So you call every you call <laughs> you call every carbonated beverage pop? Yeah. What? Wow. And you do too, Evan? Well, I mostly call it pop. But well, if like, you get a do, you call it a do. Yeah. It's just kind of what you do. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> oh, oh. Or like a root beer is like, go get me the beer, like root beer. That's what? what? Beer? I've always That's, like had nicknames call, for You call root beer a beer? <laughs> yeah, like if my mom back goes, home so like for like. What about a diet, pep <laughs> diet pepper? Dr. Pepper, what do you call that? I hate Dr. Pepper. I don't drink it. so I call it DP. Well, so maybe if, get if that somebody were drinking it else. and they're like, <laughs> DP. Uh, you just call it, you, okay, so you have nicknames for it. If it's like sparkling water, I don't That's that disgusting. Nah, if you drink Croix. sparkling water, you're... I call it Pellier. Oh, you drink the Pellier? Ooh. That's pretty gassy. Ooh. I hate it. <laughs> you go to Europe, that's all they have. It sucks. You don't like it? I don't like sparkling water. Sparkling water is terrible. Yeah. Actually, I used, to have, is terrible. I used to drink a lot of sodas and then I switched over sparkling water. It is TV steady. Fine. But most of the time I say, and it makes you burp and feel I'll either say either one. Garbage. Jamie, what do they say in Alaska? Oh, well, we have a good base, so I have people from everywhere. What? Back home. What do you I mean, in New York, nobody, if you had said pop, like that's why I thought you said pot. I'm sorry. Because I'm like pot, like pop, pop. Like that's what we used to call my grandfather. Pops. Yeah, that's why I call my dad. Yeah. What yeah. Up, but that's really funny. Yeah. I guess I should, I should learn the lingo. I've been here for two months. <laughs> or I, or sometimes I just say, "Can you give me a drink?" Well, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like if that if that's the case, like if you're asking someone, I'll be like, "Can you get get me a soda?" Not like a pop. I feel like that's. But what, you would say, "Get me a pop." Okay, I would say, that's, "Give me a soda," but do you have? Pop? Say, oh, yeah, just that's oh, okay. that's that's a fact right there. So if, if, like, if I, I asked, asked you, to, I'd be like, "Hey, can you grab me a soda?" But I would be like, "But if, if I was I to come in, over to your house, I was like, do you, would you, do you have pop?" Soda oh, weird. Yeah. That's so weird. As you guys say, can you give me a soda pop? As a Canadian, I've I never used it. Hold on, quiet down. If anyone says soda, I just instantly think club soda. But as a Canadian, yeah. If you say soda, I'm like, why do you want club soda? That's just weird. Really? What? Every wow. time that's pop. Why do you guys call it pop? Because it pops? Or do you uh, it's not a club. Uh, no, so good. you would think club soda. So we're just naming oh, drinks yeah. uh, after so like the sound. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> so when you open it, go like a club soda and be like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> What's club soda? Like sparkling water? It's like, no, no, it's, it's like. It's weird. It's, 
It's, it's, no, it's a nasty. It's hard to nasty. describe. Yeah. It's kind of like carbonated. It's carbonated. Right? So you know, it's like, it says soda on like the vending things. That's what it is. Yeah. It's, it's literally water. like Sprite, but ten times, million yeah. times worse. With no flavor. Yeah. It doesn't have, it, any, it doesn't have any flavor. It's like lime and the lime and flavors. Yes. Oh, so yes, it's just sparkling exactly. water. Yeah, but yeah, it's, but it's like, no, worse. It's like, worse. It's yeah. the um, it's carbonation. Like, it's, like yeah. it's literally just. Yeah. Like, it's sparkling. like a mixer. That's all. It's not even water. water. It's no. not. Yeah. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, you put it in the mixed drink. Yeah. Literally. That's all you oh, like to a, make them like fizzy. Like a soda and vodka. That's yeah. what they gin, use. Gin, gin tonic and uses yeah. that. Yeah. Gin gin tonic. Tonic. Or like, what are what is that um, drink that any kid can get? Like it's like Italian soda. Don't they use that? What? No, like the Italian soda. Yeah. You add club soda and then you add like flavoring and then some like milk or whatever. So it's just a base drink. Literally. It's a base and then you just vote. Oh, it's just a soda stream? Yeah. What's the note? Okay, never mind. It's, isn't, isn't that the thing <laughs> that's like, what the hell's a soda stream? And then makes your water fizzy. I, I wanted to try one of those. Yeah, to make it. Fizzy. Oh, the thing that you plug in yeah. and it carbonates your water. So what's carbonated water? No. What? What? Doesn't it just add carbonation? I don't know, man. Yes. Beyond my pay grade. Okay. All right, so let's get back to it. So you have a pop in front of you. You have what else is in front of you? Ten binder. Okay. You call it binder? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the point being, you don't have any reason to doubt any of that, right? Right. Okay. So then, like, if I if I write this on the board, this is gonna make this is gonna. If I say a sensible world, a world that you can. Experience with your senses. Sensible world exists. I was kind of a goofy example, but okay. Um, so we're not in a dream. We're all alive. God exists. The sensible world exists. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, let's go to point six, which is this issue of reliability. Okay. Um, Colton, yes. if I had asked you to, well, let's pick up somebody else, uh, Olivia. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if you found out that, that Colton had like, not to pick on it, but Colton had arthritis, would you want him to build a Jenga tower for you? If he had, he had arthritis? Or if he had Parkinson's disease. What the no. hell is Parkinson's? I forgot. This. Parkinson's is, is really shaky. Yeah. Yes. Okay, would you want Colton to build you a Jenga tower? I think that's a no. why, <laughs> why not? Because it would be like very He's tweaking. well done. Pardon me? <laughs> it wouldn't be done well. It wouldn't be done well. Okay. He would not oh. be he would not be a reliable source for building a Jenga tower. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Um <laughs> So your source has to be sensible. Uh, yep. Uh, no, it has to be somebody you can trust. Somebody you okay, can trust. let's go with this for a second example, Olivia. Okay. Imagine your dream built house is being constructed, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you find out that Asher is going to be the person working on it. <laughs> oh, but he lied about his, his condo tractor. But he's been, he's been using too much of Josiah's pop. <laughs> 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 um, would you think of him as a reliable source? Would you want him to do it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Maybe he has some That's cool a really ideas. interesting question. <laughs> I guess. I built a table in the shop. You don't think you can trust me. <laughs> you built a table. <laughs> yeah, it's, it only like was shaped a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> trust me, I can build a table. <laughs> Um, okay, so the point being that when you're talking about the construction of something like a tower or a house or whatever, you want the source that's building it to be reliable, right? Make sense? Okay. So, um, here's another thing we can say. It's trustworthy. You don't have reason to doubt it, right? Okay.
Okay, now let's, this is where the fun is. I'm going to erase this. Is that an Anakin quote? What? This is where the fun begins. Oh, that's Helen Solo. We're close. Oh, oh maybe he said it, but he was, originally it was Han Solo. Han Solo? Yeah, Han Solo. In Star Wars. In Star Wars. <laughs> when did he say that? He said it in Star Wars Episode Four. New Hope. Here's Are you where the fun, where the fun the second too? <laughs> When they're leaving um, uh, Mos Eisley, and they're trying to escape from the... Star Destroyer. Oh, okay. From the tractor beam. No, not the tractor beam. The Star Destroyers are trying to cut them off before they can make the jump into light speed. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody may have seen Star Wars a hundred times. I'm just oh, out there. Don't worry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know it's why, why, this, is so, why is this so funny. Maybe this is a dream. It's like a nerd show. Because <laughs> they're like, hey, you didn't. Yes, you did. <laughs> I don't remember, dude. Yeah, maybe we do need to have that race. You, you should see his truck. Right. This like, nerd can run everything. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, truck's name is uh, Chewie. Pardon? No, my truck's name is Chewie. Literally, it's an amazing you, get, you get in his truck and there's Star Wars on the floor, yeah, on I the have, dashboard. Why is that bad? Everywhere. On the headrest? The fact uh, that you just proved him wrong in his own show <laughs> is just amazing. It's not a show, it's a movie. A movie. I don't like the, I don't like the, 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 the originals, though. I'm a prequel fan. Oh boy, <laughs> we're gonna have a problem. The originals don't. I don't mind them though. But they are okay. <coughs> All right. I guess that was really funny. I suppose. Okay. So now we're gonna get to this interesting. This is uh, an interesting this question. Okay. So we have these basic beliefs, right? Now the question becomes, what's the source of basic? Belief D. We'll go with D. We'll start with D. Okay? What's the source of basic belief D? All right. Somebody want to tell me that? Basic belief yeah, like D. D. Sensible world exists, right? So we used to Josiah as an example, right? All those things are real. The pop, the binder, the cell phone. You walk in here, okay? All of this is real, right? You go outside, the sky is real, the sun is there, the trees are there. All of that's real, right? You all, we all certain about that? Yeah. Okay, so that's part of our belief system, part of our tower, okay? Make sense? Okay, but what's the source of it? Senses. Okay, senses, good. So what are those, uh, Asher? Like eyes, feel, or sight, smell, touch, touch, hear, hearing, there's no warmth and taste. Okay. Good, okay, good. Make sense? Okay. Yep. All right, now let's let's talk about this for a second. So we, we, we've, we've established that, but let's go back to this issue of reliability. Okay, so then the next question becomes, are the senses 100% reliable? Grace, what? No? Why not? Because they can lie to us. Well, um, I guess since we're bigger swarm, we can still tell what's going on with our fellow computers. Okay, so there's a we're, Our idea of being awake is that we're, like, our eyes are open when we're moving, we're talking, because we're literally doing that in our dreams. Uh, okay. So, how can we substantiate that? Okay, good. Because you can't feel anything in the dreams. What do you mean? Like, you can't. Like, say, God uh, punch and feel like sense of feeling something in the dream. Yeah, oh. just like when you start, have you ever fell in your dream? Pardon? Have you ever fell in your dream? Yes. Yeah, and you wake up. Yeah, yeah you wake up. So you feel okay, it. Does, you ever, does your oh. back hurt after you woke up? No, but you still feel it. Oh, you don't feel it, you just wake up. You can't scared. be colorblind. You just wake up because you're scared. <laughs> Yeah, have you never had a dream to where like someone's chasing after you and just like in the movies or dumbass yeah, tricks? Like, yeah. You can lose your senses, which makes it I don't know. All right, let's 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 start with dreaming. I don't remember I think that's much actually dreaming. interesting. Okay. So you said something about waking up, right? Well yeah, like there's times that you can be having a dream and something bad happens, a you get punched in the face or fall or something, and yep. you startle yourself. You get scared, but you can feel it. Okay. You do have feelings towards that dream. It might not be the same feeling as in the real world as if I fall and I scrape my knee. Okay. In my dream, I might. If I fall, let's say I fall and I break my ankle in my dream, I'll have to say I might wake up, but 
I won't actually. Oh, it's a broken break man. Oh, so the feelings might not be the same as in the real world as you would be dreaming, but you still have feelings in the dream. Okay. If that made any sense. That made perfect sense. Okay. I feel like it's not a physical feeling, but an emotional feeling. Because when you wake up, you're kind of fearful. Because when you get punched in the face, you're like, damn, I need to punch the face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or you get punched in the face. Let's just go with this one. You actually so feel we're going we're to use the example of touch, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you get punched in the face, there are nerves that are sending signals to your brain that register pain, right? Yes. Okay. Could those nerves be activated in a dream state? <coughs> like, very Okay. <coughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I think it's go ahead. What about the people like in like the armies and like they go and something happens like where their arm gets cut off or okay, yeah. a landmine blows up their legs. There's phantom yeah. feeling. What's that? It's a like, false lamb? Is that what? Wait. What? Yeah, what yeah, it's, that's not the best way to put it. But people like, get their what did they call like, it? Do you know? Like, do you know how when they don't have a limb, from the top, like they can still feel like an itch that it, yeah. their leg wasn't there, they can yeah. still feel like an itch. Thank you. That's what I said. Well, we're just giving, did you say that? Yes. Oh, you did? You got it from me. Oh, but still. <laughs> you got to watch this new movie that just came out. It explains a lot of this. It's called uh, Don't Worry Darling. It's, like it's about phantom limbs? Dude, no, no, no. But like, <laughs> okay, but go ahead with phantom limbs. Let's just make sure this is super clear. What what was the point? The point was that you still feel that it's there even though it's not. Yes. Like you get random pains or stuff like that. It's, it's, it's not there. Yes. Okay, so that's like uh, Brayden, your point, right? That the dream you can feel like you're being hit or some sensation. But it's not like the same feeling, you know, like you still have, like if I, have, if I fall off yep. of this desk right now, yep. it's going to hurt. In my dream, I'll fall off this desk and I might just wake up and be like scared and startled. Like it won't. That's what I'm saying, hurt. physical yeah, and but emotional. When, when, you, when you hit the ground in the dream, does it feel real in a way that's painful and... Immediate. Okay, but that's the thing is have you ever had a dream where like something actually bad happens to you and you don't either finish the dream or you wake up? Because I've never had a dream where something is bad that something super wrong that's going on. Oh, have you ever had sleep paralysis? Okay, Jamie. Yeah, that's just, Hold on. You're like, that's just quite that. I, I, I fall a lot in my dreams because of my sleep paralysis. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because of my sleepwalking. So like now I don't sleepwalk as much, but because like I still have that. I don't know if you care that. I fall a lot. Yes, it does hurt. Like, wow. I can wake up and I can tell you that, like, I fell off. I tripped downstairs last night, technically in my dream, but I woke up and, like, I was fine and everything, but it did hurt. Wow. Damn, that's like, crazy. I can recall, like, falling. I feel like it also depends on how vivid your dreams are. Wow. <laughs> That'd be dope. Imagine running a whole track like <laughs> Alright, Ashley, you're going to jump in then, Grace. Guys, quite that. I was just going to say, like, when you have like sleep paralysis, you're like kind of awake and you're like aware of what's around you, but like you can't, legit like, can't move or anything. You and then like, can't move. I've heard some people say that like they feel like something's pushing down on their chest when they're in that like state. Have you never had it? And it's just like, I've never had it. I guess they're kind of like feeling something while they're like still yeah. dreaming technically. Okay. I mean, I saw a whole ass yeah. demon. Right? <laughs> well, I was just saying like reoccurring dreams, cause like I've had that before. <clears throat> Recurring what? Dreams? Recurring Re dreams. Or like, or like I have like episode dreams where like a dream will happen and then I'll like go to sleep and then like the next thing will happen like following up that dream. Her dreams are reality. Or like I'll TV replay show. that dream like <laughs> either like a year later or like a few days later. Yep. Or like, and then I'll remember exactly everything that's going to happen. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's, that happens with dope. reoccurring dreams though. Like I had reoccurring dreams for a long time, and then I stopped having them, and then all of a sudden I had like a couple years later I had the same exact dream that I had when I was like younger. It was really weird. Wow. Yeah. One time, also like never tasted anything in a dream either. Yeah, dude. Like one time I had some gas pizza in a dream. <laughs> and I was like, I'm a fuck. Uh, so you did taste something. <laughs> no, but then I was going for a bite and I woke up. 
I feel like He's, that's what your body does. Is because out of all the scary dreams, but why, ever, why would taste be any different if it's a sending, if it's a sending of nerve signals to your brain? Like if, if it's just coming from your tongue rather than the rest of your body, right? Like if you can feel pain when you fall downstairs in a dream, why should why taste that? Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say it may not be taste, but like you could possibly wake up and say you had a dream about food or whatever. Like you could be salivating. Yeah, like it's also it true. Could not be the actual physical taste, but sense of the just yeah yeah i also feel like like the way that like if we wake up is because our bodies don't know already what that taste or feeling is so oh. it's like like the sense of like when you're falling from a really high place and like before you hit the ground like that's when you would die normally you wake up because your body doesn't understand yep. like your body doesn't know what the feeling of dying yeah, is. that was, was good <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in psychology class, we talked about how dreams are like kind of your desires or wants as something. And then I was also thinking about how like what she was saying, how you wake up. It's just like your your brain's getting uh, stimulants put into it and then it just like kind of just wakes the body up. You get too much yep. stimulus. Why are you disagreeing with? Because I don't want to die. <laughs> um, I die in my dreams all the time. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, I never actually. I'm not gonna lie. I never get to that point when exactly. something's like really, really bad. It's about just about to happen. I always wake up. My dreams are crazy. Okay, let's let's pause for a second. And I, I'm not. What I'm gonna ask is gonna sound goofy, but there are good reasons for asking it. What we've just registered is that our dreams can be very realistic, very vivid, impactful, sensation-filled. We have feelings in them. We feel pain in them. Okay. Uh, they they move us deeply. They scare us, etc. Okay. Um, so, how? What gives us absolute certainty that we're not in a dream, right? Now? Because you, the feeling of pain, or actually. But remember what Jamie just said. Yeah. Why are you in pain right now? <laughs> no. Class is so boring. It's pain. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, I've noticed too. Like it's a weird thing. You can't run. Like, I've been running in my dreams all the time. I can't run in my dreams. That's yeah, because when I, I came up here for my visit, I'm looking back at Evan saying, "See ya." Dude, when I came I up here for my up. visit, I was actually watching javelin videos, right? And my mom has a video. I woke up and I went like this, like I was throwing javelin. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Ooh. Anyways. Okay, so I'm not. This is sounds. I'm, I'm, it's kind of an odd question. Yes. Oh, never mind. Go ahead, right, but how, 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 how is that showing that you're not in a dream? Okay, you're kind of freaking me out here. To be okay, go ahead. Well, something that I've always been able to do, which I thought everybody else normally that I talk to about it that can't do, is like if I'm having like a dream that I really don't like, like I feel like I can switch it. And it's like something else completely starts. I'm not joking. I'm okay. Like, okay. That's, that's, that's an actual thing. Like no, no, I can, I can that. switch. Yeah. Yeah. I can switch to like a bad yeah. dream that I don't yeah. like into something else. Yeah. So like, okay. What makes me feel like this isn't a dream right now is because ev like this constant reoccurring thing is happening, of where like we but wake up and go to school and I can't Hold switch on. it. Maybe that's because you don't want to switch it. Wow. Well, that's. I think I <laughs> why? Why would you want to switch this? This is well. Just if I could switch it, like I can you, normally switch my dream. Yeah, you say you switch from a bad dream to happening. a good dream. But why would you presuppose that this is a bad dream? Because it's cold outside. I'd rather be in Hawaii somewhere warm. Consciously, you think that? It better not be. A dream. Maybe. It's I mean, to go dream. back to our buddy Zygmunt, maybe this is your unconscious telling you that you really just love philosophy. <laughs> And you just keep having a recurring dream of being in philosophy class. Yeah, I don't definitely don't think I would have that. Experience. I don't think I, don't I would either. That. I just really don't. Why is that freaking you That's out? That's weird. Ooh, because I've weird. never met you before. And I've never met anybody else. So I randomly, just in my dream, go to college. Bro. And I'm just making yeah. up that but much Evan, detail what I'm asking people's you, okay, faces. Evan, let, let me you get super precise on this. Hold no. on. But have you ever, ever in your dream seen someone else's face that you've never met yes. in your dream? No. Yeah. 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 Yes. What? Yeah. I've known your people in that too. Yeah. 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 Everybody, everybody yeah. in my I'm dream, saying, I've, I've always either seen, seen in person or yes. 
Okay, Evan, you believe this, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have absolute? You think you have absolute certainty on this? Mm -hmm. And then I'm asking you why. I just told you why. Because there's so many things that happen in like our lives, or in your case, our dreams. Yep. Like. If I would like when I go to sleep and then I have a dream, uh -huh. I can control it. I can do things in it. You can like, pick up that bottle. You can do all sorts of things. Right well, now. I know, but I can change my dream. I can't. You're change gonna leave life. here. Why? Why? I, so I, why? Okay, then. So when you go to work and it, like, what say, was that? Maybe life's just a longer dream. It's. I'm it's saying like you guys were all saying. Okay, I'm. Con you're it's convinced. Not. You're convinced that this it's, is not a dream. It's not. Hold on. I want to walk through this. This is not just a silly question on my part, because then we ask about the reliability of the source, right? So, like, if 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 Colton had Parkinson's disease, this would not be he would not be a reliable source to build this. So the question is, what's the source and its reliability for determining that we're not in a dream? And all that Evan has come up with is, I wouldn't change the dream. I don't think that's a very reliable source. How do we do that? You said that. In you can't taste something in no, your brain, I, right? No, I never agreed to that. The sense that you're actually <coughs> alive, I don't know. The sense, don't you sense that you're alive in your dream? No. How do we know? Because maybe okay, after so death you I dream. If it was a dream, then why in everybody's dream that you normally dream about like yeah. how, what you're doing or whatever. Right. And normally in your dream, you have the girl of your dreams and you have a bunch of money or whatever. So why don't you in this life? <laughs> but again, why are you saying that? Like, just be, well, just, you're, 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 I'm not, no <laughs> hate on this, no hate on you or anything, but why are you here teaching this class? I'm saying, I'll, all I have to do to respond to that is come up with Freudian ideas of unconscious and unconscious. That's it. So that your subconscious actually desires this in some deep way. That's all I have to do. This is why I don't watch movies like Inception. <laughs> You should watch the movie Butterfly Effect. What? What did she just say? Butterfly Effect. See, I just got deja vu from that. I've heard that somewhere before in a dream. Butterfly Effect. <laughs> wow! Yeah, take so that. So, so, yeah. so if you've heard it before in a dream, this doesn't. This means that so you that that just doesn't make sense. If you have deja vu and you say you've heard it from a dream, before, why would you? Why couldn't you wake up? You, we, have you ever woken up from a dream and you're still in a dream? Yeah. No. What? That no. happens? Oh, oh shit, that'd be scary. What? What kind of that's that would be scary. Happen. 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 Imagine you wake up from a scary dream. Happen. Turn the corner and the motherfucker's still there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I've woken up, I've been that. dreaming, and then I wake Fuck up, that. and I'm like in like I've, I've had a dream Mexico or something, and then I wake up and I'm back in New York, and then I wake up. Like, haven't you ever had like a level four inception kind of dream? We're just like in a dream. Yeah. Yeah. I have like two Houses that I live at, so sometimes yep. I wake up in the other house and yep. then like I wake up again and I'm actually at my other house. Yeah. And like that's kind of like weird. <laughs> yeah. This is something. Nice. All right, well, we got till Monday to convince me there that you're not in a dream. I'm gonna do some research. Sounds good. Um, our vows like that. Okay.